Welcome to my channel, Angela's Kitchen Garden, where I grow my own organic fruit, vegetables and cut flowers. Today I've come down just to do a bit of a harvest really, and so I'll show you what I've got on my plot and what's ready to harvest. So the first bed that we're going to be harvesting from is our carrot and our parsnip bed. Now with these, the parsnips aren't actually ready to harvest yet, but they do need thinning out. So what I will do is I will pick the biggest ones and I will take them out of here. And that will just give the other ones more space to grow because they're they're planted a little bit too tightly together so I'll just thin them out and then I will use the um, larger ones that I take out as those sort of little mini parsnips that you can roast whole and so they'll be really nice and then on the front here I've got my carrots and it's the same with the carrots they're planted quite closely together so what I'll do is I'll just thin out some of the bigger ones to give them a bit of extra space so that they can grow so these are our carrots and our parsnips. They're not massive, but they'll be, um, they'll be really nice and tasty. With the carrots, I picked the biggest ones that I could find, and then I've left the others in there because I didn't have quite so many. And the same with the parsnips. I just picked the biggest ones that I could find to give the smaller ones a bit more space to grow. So in here are our cucumber plants, and they grow nicely. These are our lunchbox ones. But my son came down and he ate a couple of these when we first got to the plot because he loves the cucumbers. And so these ones will be ready in the next couple of days. They're not quite ready yet. So we'll just leave these to grow. But so these are our outdoor ones that haven't got any cover over them at all. And these are called Market Moor. And my son came down and he picked these. And this is what we got from this one today. And if you have a look under here, there's another one coming. This will be ready in another couple of days. And if you go up the plant, you can see that there are more coming along. So everywhere, every place that you get a leaf, you get a little cucumber that comes out. Now moving on to the next item to be harvested, it is my broad beans. So with my broad beans, I don't like to eat broad beans when they're absolutely massive. I like them when they're quite small. And so I go along and I feel the pods and with a pod like this, I just give it a twist off. So if you see the pods in here, they're a nice size. I like to eat them at around this size. I don't like them when they get massive. And so I'm gonna harvest the broad beans along here that are around this size. And I've got a massive patch of broad beans to, to pick from. So my son is giving me a hand picking them and he is the perfect size for picking broad beans. And these are the ones, so he knows which ones to pick. So he'll give me a hand and we'll work our way along the rows and we'll pick the broad beans. And as I was saying in my plot tour, I've been really lucky with my broad beans. I haven't pinched out the tops and I haven't got black fly. And I think that that is because I've got that massive patch of nettles down at the other end. And it's meant that I've got loads of ladybugs that have really helped keep the black fly population down. So my broad beans are looking lovely and lush. Thank you. So we'll work our way through these, picking them, and then I will show you what they look like. So this is today's broad bean harvest. We've still got loads left on the plant, but I don't like taking all of the skins home. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to shell all of these broad beans and then put the broad beans inside a tub so that it makes it easier for us to take home. So that massive bundle of broad beans are now shelled and I put them in this tub here so we've got a nice, nice harvest of these and any that I don't use. I'm going to make some pea and broad bean risotto, which I absolutely love with these. And any that I don't use, I will then freeze and it will mean that I'll be able to use them when I'm running low on crops through the winter. So the next harvest that we've got is our sugar snap peas and our Hearst green shaft peas. And they're absolutely loads on here, as you can see. And if you have a look over on this side, we've got our hair screen shaft peas and you give them a little bit of a squeeze to check that they're ready. And then you pop the odd one open, just check the peas inside, check they all look all right. And these are a nice size to harvest them. And we tend to eat a couple as we go and then the rest we put into a tub and we do shell them down at the plot rather than taking them home. And so it means that once we get home, all of our crops are ready just to store away. So out of the sugar snap peas and the Hearst green shaft, which are your favourite? The Hearst green shaft because this is more blander and that has more like 
sweet must taste. Does it? Do you like peas? Yeah. As long as they don't have worms in them. <laughs> That's always good when they don't have worms in them. <laughs> so this is our harvest. I've got the peas in here and this is a nice big big tub of peas here. I've got my mange too in here. They're sugar snap peas but I picked these ones a bit smaller and then the ones that were really big and chunky that were sort of bigger than this what I've done is I've actually shelled them and put them in with the peas. Next year I'm not going to grow sugar snap peas I'm going to grow more I'm going to grow mange too and her screen shaft peas because the sugar snap peas aren't quite as nice when you eat them as mange too but when it's really difficult to get them just at the right stage where they haven't got too big so I'm just going to cut my losses and next year I'm just going to grow mange too and it also means that they will be ready a lot faster than the hair screen shaft peas which means I won't get be getting the harvest the sort of gluts of the harvest at the same time I'll be able to start picking the mange too much earlier than the hair screen shaft peas so the next thing that I'm going to harvest is some of my multi-sown beetroot If I just give this big one in here a bit of a pull. So it's still quite small, it's about sort of golf ball size. But I've still got a clump here, so these will continue growing now. But it, I quite like them when they're a bit smaller. So I'll get a couple of those to take home. And now I'm going to harvest some of my summer fruiting raspberries. If you have a look down here got some raspberries on them so what I'll do is I'll pick these and then I'll show you how many how many I managed to get I've got a row here of the summer fruiting so they're all hidden under the leaves so I've managed to pick a little tub of um, raspberries here these are the ones that my son missed when he went through the patch earlier so they look really good so we'll take those home we have been eating them for the past couple of weeks we've been taking sort of small harvests like this home if you can see in in amongst the leaves here I have got my white currants and you know they're ready when they go around this colour they're ready so it's sort of not quite white it's sort of like a salmony sort of colour and so I'm going to pick these now and because they were this colour the birds didn't spot them and so they've actually left them so I've got a good crop of these so this is the quantity of white currants that I was able to pick today I have got more on the bush but they're not quite ready so I'll leave them for another couple of days just to ripen up a bit more. Now the next thing that I'm going to harvest is a courgette. I'm going to harvest this one like this. I don't like them when they get bigger than this. I like to pick my courgettes nice and small but this one you can pick it like this with the courgette nice and small and the flower on it and then you can stuff the flower so that's quite nice and then if you have a look down here all the flowers that are coming up there are going to be lots more courgettes on this plant I'll probably leave this one a couple more days till it's about this size and then pick it then I can use that in the kitchen so the next thing that I'm going to harvest is my Swiss chard now what I do with this is I just pull off a couple of the outside leaves so with this plant here I'll just pull a couple of these off and I'll go along the row and I'll do that with a couple of the plants so you leave the growing leaves in a couple of the bigger ones just so it can continue photosynthesizing and then you've got a couple that you can take home for dinner I like to eat them around this size I don't like them when they get absolutely massive and so I like to keep harvesting them as I go so they stay nice and tender so because I grow the bright lights variety you get different colors you get a yellow you get a white and you get a red and you also get a pink actually I'm not sure if any of my pink ones have grown I think I've just got the yellow white and red actually but um, you get four different colors in it which is really nice so it makes it nice and attractive so those are all of the Swiss chard leaves that I've harvested so this is my harvest for today I'm really pleased with it I think I've got a good crop today so I've got my broad beans my berries a couple of beetroots some Swiss chard some sugar snap peas that I picked as mange too, some peas, some onions, courgette, parsnips, carrots, a cucumber and a bucket of flowers. 
hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I also post pictures of what I'm up to on my allotment on my Instagram account, Angela's Kitchen Garden. So if you have a look down in the description below, it'll be linked there. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.